So hello and welcome to the third installment in our Tatori series. Right now, I am at the bottom of Mount Dyson. This is a massive mountain with lots of different peaks. And the reason we're here is of course the salamanders. You'll want to stay tuned because we've we found something quite special, but I'm not going to spoil that slave for the video. Right now, we're going to one of the peaks of Mount Dyson because it looks like Godzilla's backbone. That's exactly what it's called. If there's something that looks like Godzilla, it's the size of a mountain. It literally is a mountain. I'm going to go up there. So I've brought trusted Richard with me, who will be joining us because I'd probably die without him. There's some maybe bears, snakes, some other wonderful wildlife on the hike up. So let's not dilly dally. Let's get going. With that bit to camera done, it was time to introduce our secret weapon on this trip, Mr. Noguchi. So just to make sure that we're going to be able to get there to the top of Mount Dyson, this is a way that uh, Richard has only traveled once before. He's uh, enlisted the help of Mr. Noguchi, who has, is an enthusiast and knows this way better than our pal Richard. So The lower part. The least. lower part. Yeah, sorry, not to outdo him. Yes, just the lower part. <laughs> so we'll be safe. The start of the hike was quite pleasant. We saw a couple of frogs and birds, the silence only broken by Mr. Noguchi's bell chiming just to alert bears to your presence. And I don't think they're that common bears here, or at least they haven't been seen that that much. They might be common, just they're not in areas that humans frequent. But of course, with the way we are as human species, you know, getting rid of nature, that sort of thing, bears come in contact more and more often with humans in their endless search for food. So you can never be too safe. And it was at this point that I was made aware of just how intense this climb was going to be. Ah, uh, uh, so not, not like a, a recommended course in the sense of it's a little bit dangerous. What we're doing now? Yeah. Okay. So a Jokusha course means like... A, Ex ad advanced? A yes, advanced. That's a very nice way of putting it. Right. Rather than dangerous, let's go with advanced. <laughs> with the ridge still far in the distance, Richard explained that we would have to go down first across the river before making the climb up to the top, which gave us a well-needed cool down in this Japanese summer heat. A lot of rivers here have been contaminated by pollutants, by local pig farms and chicken farms. This one, however, is protected and it shows in how crystal clear the water is. Absolutely beautiful. So this is the lowest that we are going to be now. So we went down and now it's just a long hike up. One of the lowest ridges, straight across up Godzilla's backbone, and then we'll get some amazing shots. You just look at this. This is, this is what you see in the adverts, is this beautiful water. And of course I couldn't resist breaking out the old Gollum impression. Help the hobbitses. The From here, the trail turned more into a climb and bouldering session than a hike. I'm recording just in case something goes wrong. You, you know, when you say hiking, it's not what I had in mind. Live a short, happy life, not a long, boring one. Luckily, Richard's wife had baked up some salamander shaped treats. This special design Japanese oh, yeah. giant salamander. Little bubble behind. <laughs> and you can check out all the other things she bakes on her Instagram page. They're vegan, organic, and gluten-free, but don't let that fool you, these were super tasty. And if you want to order your own, I'll put a link in the description of this video. Over the next four hours, we climbed, and as we drew closer, you could just make out the massive Godzilla head sleeping in the mountain. And finally, we broke out into the hot summer heat. Suffice to say that the cameraman was really enjoying the hike. Never again. Oh, and what must be the hardest hike I have ever done, we have finally made it to Godzilla's Backbone. But there's one thing left to do, we made it all the way up here, we've got to go climb Godzilla. Let's go. I mustered up every last ounce of energy I had left to climb Godzilla's Backbone, but man did it feel good. The only thing left to do was to take one of those amazing zoom out drone shots. This is one of the peaks of Mount Dyson. There's plenty around you can see they all have their unique names. Mount Dyson itself, however, is over there. That is an inactive volcano, but you can just see the broad scale of this environment, beauty of it. Of course, we've scaled the kaiju, the monster of the mountain. And I think tonight, Let's go look for the monster of the lake. Lake? Lake? River? River! River lake! 
One of those. Wet place. <laughs> Wet place, yes. <sighs> and with the kaiju mountain conquered, it was time to turn our attention to the kaijus that live in the rivers. So here we are in the wilderness. This is the third time I've been here to search for salamanders. The last two times we went to a river system that had the weirs and it was like degraded habitat that exactly was that. separated a lot. Uh, this one, however, is supposed to be a lot better. Definitely a better habitat. The river has no concrete. Yeah, as pure as it gets. Last August, we did some surveys here and we found larvae. Oh, so is that ever, this river? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh. We'll, we'll go past the place where we found the larvae. So. Oh, fantastic. So that, obviously, evidence that they're breeding here, oh. which makes this stretch of river the lowest altitude breeding ground for giant salamanders anywhere in the world. So normally, salamanders have to go so far up the river to then reproduce, but this, because this is quite low, yeah. this is great habitat for them because they also wouldn't have to go very high. Up. Exactly, and the thing about this area is that it's a kind of island population. So it's believed that during, a, uh, during an ice age, salamander populations extended all the way out to the Oki Islands. And then as the sea levels rose and the rivers sort of came back onto the mainland, it then became like an isolated population. And just in case... Yeah, sorry, Richard got stung by an absolutely boss level size hornet yeah. on his face. I think got him there as well, did you get you yeah, on the shoulder? one, two, three. Oh, so just... that's why I look weirder than normal. Exactly, so we'll so. just work some movie magic on that, some please, Instagram filter. Please. Or just have it like matching eyes. <laughs> that that yeah, might look a bit odd. <laughs> And with Richard's beautiful close-ups checked off the list, we began the trek down to the river. Also, if you want to help out Richard and Sustainable Dyson out directly, we've teamed up with Derp Tiles to bring you this awesome t-shirt. Made from 100% organic cotton, all the profits of which go towards protecting these creatures and preserving the habitat that they rely on. You can find them in the link in the description of this video. Holy moly! You found a snake? No, a massive spider. I think this is called an Oni... Oni spider. Oh wow, that's a fat one. Try kissing Whoa. it. Holy hell. <laughs> this spider. is a point of reference. Wow. Oh, now it moved. Well, you'll see when we're in the river that you get a lot of what's called eye shine. When oh, you yeah. wear a head torch, and like for spiders, it's crazy. Oh, for spiders. And then you realize like there's millions of spiders everywhere. Wait, that's the ladder? Yeah. <laughs> see, I wouldn't call the ladder, I call it. An adventure playground. Yeah, I suppose. You've got, got to get it, you've got to be cool like that and get the stick to go in the ground, otherwise you're not allowed to proceed. That oh, was rubbish. Sugar. That was <laughs> embarrassingly bad. Okay, we could cut that, make that look better. <laughs> no, no. So here's the actual river, would you believe? Look how small it is. It's just overgrown. And I've been in here, like, during the rainy season, after the typhoons, and the flow is never enough that you would that would warrant a dam this size right okay but when they did all the construction downstream in the other river they just sort of threw this one in for a laugh so we've mentioned this in the previous videos before about the the dams and the weirs just blocking off you know this habitat that the salamanders really need to get up and breed and you know reproduce and populate and this is just another occasion where it's a giant dam you can see the river there there's no real need for it and it serves no purpose. And I suppose its purpose now is to be an inconvenience. And so we descended into the giant's domain. So we were just saying that you look at this like river or this amount of water that's running here, and you wouldn't imagine that there are giant salamanders down here, but no one else is gonna be looking at them, basically. No one else from the government's gonna put on their waders and get down here. That's why we need people like Richard, nutless, to bring other yeah. people like me in. <laughs> <laughs> Yarp. <laughs> then we had a surprise visit. Look, 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 beautiful. Don't know if you can see down there. What oh, a cutie. Perfect. So that's, a, that's called a Japanese hare. They're actually in a lot of trouble as well. In the middle of the, it looks like a kangaroo. Look at that. I've never seen it like this before. So the Japanese hare is an, an endemic species to Japan. So its population has massively dropped as well because of habitat destruction and habitat loss. And just a little bit later, we came across our first salamander. Okay, we have a salamander. Oh, we have one. Oh yeah, straight ahead, that big black mound. But it's beauty and a really beautiful, oh no, that's quite a small one. I think that might be Jane, what a beauty. Oh wow. So this is what it's all about. This is where you want to see them. 40 years old, perhaps? 40 years old, that yeah, one. I guess. 
There was a, a specimen taken back to Holland. So they took a, a fully grown giant salamander back to Holland and it lived for 52 years in Jesus. Holland. So they know it was, a, well, it was already full grown. So it had to be kind of 30, 40 years old at least. Right. Plus so... 52. Tendency is to give them oily sea fish and they basically die of obesity. But we would get more than just one, as only a couple of minutes up the river, we spotted another one. Yeah, a big one, it's a big one. Quick, 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 because it's gonna go in the side. Oh God, yeah. Unfortunately, this one darted away into a crevice at the side of the river. And then I acquired a little hitchhiker. The hell is that? Oh, hold on, look at that. A little guy. There, there's like many different species of cicada, aren't there? Yeah, it's a classic animated trope when it's summer, you hear all the cicadas. Oh, Jesus, that was a big crane fly, whatever that was. Landed on my head. But, uh, oh no, that was him. There we go. Now he's on the front. What are you doing? <laughs> While we were chatting away, Richard spotted our third salamander. <gasps> Look. Oh, fat. there, right there. So that's a fatty pregnant female. That's a pregnant female? Yeah. I would think. Wow, she is going. Look at her go. Morning. Let's see if we can get her. What? Not well, get her. not get her, but you know, get a shot of her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Unfortunately, we were just a bit too slow and she sought refuge under this giant rock. This might be bad for filming in our shoot, but it shows how important places like this are to these giant salamanders. There was no need to worry though, as just a short distance away, we would find another salamander. Whoa, big man, big, well, big, 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 oh wait, PG. Big, big one. Where are we? Up there, up there in the middle. In the middle. Oh, he's a white boy. He's a fatty. He's really chunky. That's a chunky boy. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. What a beauty. Wow. Making a very slow wow, getaway. Wow, that's a big old boy. Going upstream too. Yeah, they're strong with the jaw muscles. So that tells me almost definitely it's a, a male. A male one. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Wow. Going upstream. Always a pleasure. 23 million year old animal right there. Not this individual. No, of course not. But then there would be a surprise right around the corner. Oh, there's another one right in front of it. Wait, what? There's two salamanders. Look at the size of the tiny little head oh, yeah. compared to his big chunky. That's what I've never, that's so rare to see that. I've never had that happen before. Yeah, there's two right, right there. Oh, he's just oh, let go. Yeah. Oh no. He's, yeah, yeah, he's... He, oh wait, no, he's going around the other way. Actually, going for a kiss. I think the other ones, if they've been longer, they've been thinner. Yeah, but definitely, I said to you before, below the dam where you went last time is not such a good habitat, so they are quite skinny. Right. Just by seeing how big and wide they are is, is a good indication that this environment is really good. I know you mentioned that you saw two fishing. Yes. Is so this fishing behavior? No. So what I actually meant by what I mean by fishing, they actually had, they were like feet and bum out of the water with their head into like a, a pool. Oh, okay. So that's what I mean. It was almost like striking from above. Oh. Whereas normally, because they're ambushed predators, they just sit in the center of the, the river or out towards the middle and just wait for fishes to sort of swim anywhere near its head. So unfortunately, um, done surveys in the Nawa River, the big river, yeah, which is the one with the problems. That's the one that I've been to. That's the, yeah. one of the ones you've been to, yeah. And um, check the overall health measurements, weigh them and that kind of thing. And a lot of them have eye issues. I noticed but, you mentioned that last time. Yeah. You know, like the eyes look a bit- Cloudy. Clouded, yeah. And someone that recently, there was one guy that looks like he just doesn't even have eyes anymore. But well, they're just milk, milky over. No, 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 as in like holes. It's definitely not a natural thing. Yeah. It's obviously something that humans are, are putting into the into the river. So it could be run off from the- What do you mean, so it, like pig farms or anything like well that? It could well be yeah. at the heavy metals in the pig medicine, which then gets into the, into into the, the water via the pig. So we're going to be doing more water testing 
this summer with a researcher. By the time I've uploaded this video, Richard has posted the results of these water tests. And to no one's surprise, they found phosphates, ammonia, as well as other contaminants. As shocking as this is to the international experts, unfortunately, it's still within the limits set by the local authorities. And because of this, Richard is having to change how he approaches the issue. But then also checking like the rice fields for contamination as well, and even right. the rice and then also the, the seafood. Because one of the things that is, has been challenging is making people care enough to do something. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's, if it's just about protecting the animal, unfortunately that hasn't affected, affected anyone, anyone enough. enough to actually change policy or criticize the government or think about different ways to farm or whatever. But if we can show that seafood is suffering, the rice itself is becoming contaminated, top contaminated with heavy metals. There's also the risk of zoonosis, so diseases. Right, so you're talking about jumping to a different species? Yeah, absolutely. Right. So like, like a bit like swine flu was. So. Yeah, that kind of thing. And then, so basically if we can show then a connection to human health right. and the fishing industry, and if, you know, get a bunch of angry fishermen and use that channel, that <laughs> anger towards... <laughs> point them, exactly. Point them in the right direction. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's not about just protecting the animal, that doesn't work you've got to protect the habitat. At this point, we had found five salamanders, the number Richard had predicted. However, the night still had its biggest surprises in store for us. There's a cute little one up ahead. A cute little one? I mean, in comparison to what we've just seen, a very small one. See, there you go, prime example. It didn't want to come out and then went, see what I mean? Yeah. And then went and found, and then will come up a different way. Yeah, it really didn't want to go in there. No. But despite what Richard had just said, this salamander had different ideas. So they don't like leaving the water, it, it, it seems, yeah. Look at that, wow. Wow, beautiful. Those folds of skin on its sides, because it gives it more surface area, so that it's more chance to absorb oxygen from the water. Oh, really? Mm. Oh, okay. Normally, in order to check these salamanders, they would have to be taken out of the water to get a good look, which can only be done by licensed professionals. But lucky for us, this one had decided to come as far out of the water as it felt comfortable, allowing Richard to get a good close-up inspection. Some amphibians can regrow whole limbs. But did we talk about this before? I think maybe. Yes. Grow back a stump rather than a... A digit. Yeah, exactly. Right. When, they, when they're old. I think when they're very young, it can grow back fully, but... Yeah, see the front foot's all right. Mm -hmm. the toes have been completely bitten off. Well, it's got like tiny little regrowth. So I wonder if it was very young, it had, had its leg bitten off or crushed or something. And then we came to the end of tonight's search, where Richard and a group of Marines had cleared away the debris last year. A massive amount of rocks and wood had clogged up this entire tunnel, rendering it completely impassable for a salamander. We built this up and just with the heavy rains or something, it's... It's, it's knocked this stuff down, is it? Yeah. But before, this was another barrier, because they wouldn't be able to come around as well, right? Because there's a road up there, yeah. concrete. But they, they, they'll be able to climb up that, but it's just give it a top up. Go on, boy. Get... Go on, let's pitch in then. As we slowly reconstructed this marvel of engineering, Richard went down to say hello to his bat friend. And there's a bat down there as well, look. We'll say hello to the bat and then we'll climb out this side. He was, however, about to find a little bit more than just a bat down there. No way. Salamander. Salamander. Oh, really? Yeah. All come, the way up come, here? Come, come, come. No way. All the way in here? Wow. Oh man, that's a big boy. That's a big boy. So that's cool. So this was all blocked up. So if we hadn't have done that conservation work. Yeah, this wouldn't have even gotten here. Exactly, and then it was blocked from about here all the way across. And you see those big rocks back there? That was all sand and blocked up. Oh wow. Wow, He's look a at chunky you. monkey as well. Wow, that's so cool. I've never seen one in this tunnel before like this. I mean, that's got to be rewarding, right? Like seeing this Absolutely. guy right here? Absolutely, because like, yeah. That's beautiful. This is the importance of practical conservation work. No way. You planted this. <laughs> yeah. I had it in my pocket. No the whole way. Time. I've got them in my wages. That is a big old boy. Yeah, Chunky that, monkey. How old do you think? 60, 70? Yeah, something like that. But he's really, he's really chunky and healthy. 
Not only had we found more than five salamanders, but also the biggest one I had ever seen in a place that without Richard's conservation efforts wouldn't have even been possible. So with everything that we've seen and learned from these amazing creatures, what's the next steps that Richard and Sustainable Dyson can make in order to secure the future of these animals? You know, I've met with local politicians before and they basically said there's no money when it's not in the public interest. So the plan now is to do fundraising and try to find sponsors for right. each weir and each ramp and then use that money. We basically pay the contractors, the construction companies ourselves to build the ramp so to connect up the river. And that was something that we did with the plushies and hopefully that money is gonna go Absolutely. and help as well. And hopefully yeah. by the time that this video is out, we should have t-shirts as well Absolutely. to help with the funding because we saw that with those plushies. Yes. But hopefully with this new t-shirt, which will probably be in the description down below, that your proceeds can go and help towards giving these salamanders a way to live and yeah. get back up. Thank you very much for your continued support. No, thank you, you for- And to your um, viewers, so it's, it's really, really important. And finally, we had to top off this adventure by giving Richard the same salamander plushie that he found in the river on our last trip. Oh, the, the things came off there. On that the... means he's getting better though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now After just, all that time, Now it just looks like he's wearing, a, he's wearing a toga. <laughs> so thank you everybody who has purchased these. They, they sold out and hopefully we'll have t-shirts to replace those. Yeah. And of course, all the profits will go straight to Sustainable Dyson and Richard's crazy antics to try and help these amazing creatures survive just a little yeah. bit longer and hopefully for a long time. Yeah, and special t-shirt that's designed that with you in mind. Don't want to spoil the surprise, but it's it's very cool. It looks very cool. Yeah. Exactly. Hello. Reunited at last. Yay. So if you've enjoyed this video, guys, leave a like and until next time, oh, we'll be back here next year. Thank you. Thanks for coming again. No problem. Oh bye-bye. Oh, <laughs>